So it's been a couple of months now since the Flux models came out, Flux Dev and Flux Chanel, but we also had the Pro model and we now have a new version of the Pro models. We've hardly taken a look at these Pro versions, so let's do that now. Now these are done with the Flux 1.1 Pro model and we'll take a quick look at them. This is a really cute image with the little village inside the flower. If we move on, you can see this really realistic looking fish. We've got this beautiful Tokyo scenery. And then something that looks like it could be some village or city in Europe. Something like an art installation with the famous wave, the tsunami wave from the Japanese author, something we can just move right past. And this beautiful chrome, reflective chrome, something to do with rainbow colors as well. Looks pretty amazing. Now, all of these were done with 1.1, the new model from Black Forest. And you can see here an example which does show some photorealism. And uh, something else there, something quite unnecessary happening there and a really beautiful image of kind of a dual exposure and something happening here with you know kind of like i don't know narnia that sort of lion the witch and the wardrobe thing where you kind of go into a fantasy land i wonder what the prompts were for these because sometimes the prompting is just as interesting as the images that you that you see photorealism i really like this one with the uh, with the photographs just blowing out of the, the camera. I think that's a really cool one. I wonder what the prompt there was. Uh, I think that's typical Flux enthusiast after too many AI releases in a row. They've kind of lost track of time. <laughs> and something beautiful there. So you can see the kind of images that we can create. This is beautiful. And that one as well. So it's kind of non-stop beauty, but obviously these images have been cherry picked. We're going to show you some images that I've created and we'll talk a little bit about them and some observations as well. But before we do that, let's take a look at some of the some of the findings that Black Forest have put out about the new models. And they're saying this is their most advanced and efficient model yet. And they say it marks a significant step forward in the mission to empower creators, developers, and enterprises with scalable state-of-the-art generative technology. Now, the scalable thing is pretty important right now because with the last video that we did on Pika, Pika Labs, they have had so many problems generating videos. I think they got swamped with new users coming on to try out the new features and the website is basically kind of shut down. They're looking to fix it, but at the moment it's it's not a good look, especially for people who have paid the, uh, the premium. Now the Flux models, they were found to be among the best models available at the moment, both the open source and also the, the closed source versions. And I believe it was actually tested under the name Blueberry before anyone knew exactly what was happening. Now they're saying that it has superior speed and efficiency, faster generation times and reduced latency. And obviously that's important for their partners. And they also say that it provides an ideal trade-off between image quality and inference speed. Now the st statistics are that it's three times faster than the current Flux.1 Pro model, which is pretty impressive. And in terms of the e ELO score, you've got here some pretty interesting comparisons. Stable Diffusion 3 Medium is right at the bottom there. Dali 3 HD is way down. And I think Open AI really need to work on a new version of Dolly 3. They need to they need to be getting getting on with Dolly 4. Uh, Playground 3, which released last month, actually doing quite well here comparing with the Chanel model. There's clearly a problem with the implementation that we saw in Perplexity, which I covered in a very brief video, which doesn't produce images that compare with the Chanel model at all. And then we've got Ideogram Mid Journey. Mid Journey 6.1 and then Ideogram version 2. I, Ideogram seems to be doing well on quite a lot of different measures, but the Flux 1.1 out on its own right at the top there. 
And when we take a look at the costs, you can see it also does very well with a reasonable cost, but very high, very high output. Now the output that they measure it against is it's a score which tries to measure prompt adherence and also the aesthetic quality. So how well does it adhere to the prompt and how beautiful is the image? And if we come down a little bit, we've got some information here on inference speeds. You can see Stable Diffusion 3 medium, very fast inferencing. Schnell, even faster in even better quality. And we also have the Flux 1.1 model, the new pro version really really strong performance and also it's faster than the dev and the and the and the previous pro model that's pretty fascinating and i'm kind of wondering what sort of technology was used to create this one because we know the schnell model uses adversarial distillation diffusion and we know that this guy here uses guidance distillation i think the schnell model as soon as i heard about the technique of adversarial uh, d distillation, I knew it was going to be an important one and we've seen it applied very well inside of the Schnell model, but it must have required quite a lot of effort to take the performance down from 10 seconds to about three seconds for the pro version compared to the dev model and even better improvement in performance from the 0.1 pro model. Something interesting happening there, something very, very interesting happening. And we can also see that there was an another pro, the older legacy version. This one is up here, the newer one. There's actually version two of the Flux 0.1 Pro model. That one is a lot faster. So there's obviously something that they've done to improve this. There's also some information about the BFL, the Black Forest Labs API, and this gives you the costs per image. And it, it all seems pretty reasonable. Apparently the new one is the Flux 1.1 is four cents per image, which is pretty decent. It's better than the previous one, five cents per image. Not bad, not bad. So there's efficiency there. And I think that's the sort of information that will be very relevant to people who are running the, the models over the API and there are a number who actually are providing services even now. Let's take a look at some of the outputs that I got. So we start off with Cleopatra and she's wearing this beautiful visor, this virtual reality visor, and she's got the LED necklace. So it managed to render a pretty decent image of the African queen. And another one with the queen is actually an imposter from the future who's pretending to be Cleopatra, but that's where the visor comes in. Another one of an African king from West Africa. I forget his name, but he was a very rich guy, apparently. And uh, same guy wearing the kind of glowing visor and also something made of gold, which is glowing as well. So it's capable of doing this kind of surreal type of image, which blends something from reality. This guy actually existed a few hundred years ago but it also produces something which is kind of completely unreal, something from the future. And again, these are the, the Zulus with their leopard skin cloth and also some glowing LED necklaces. And of course, they've got the LED lights there. Once again, uh, <laughs> we've got the bold headed warrior once again. And now we have, so there's a very African theme to these. And these are the sorts of things which are really difficult when you try to do them with the Flux dev model. The Flux dev model has this way of just ignoring your prompt and just doing something that looks beautiful, but which is not what you prompted for. Cleopatra, not Cleopatra, Tutankhamun wearing some visors, virtual reality visors. It's trying to do a reflection here, which didn't come out too well. And here we have an explorer holding up a watch. You can see the numbers on the watch face are looking fantastic. There's a kind of a misplaced compass there, but that was in the prompt. So that's pretty decent. And once again, here I asked it to do Roman numerals on the watch face and it did do a pretty decent job. The hands and the fingers I'm asking him to hold it up to, to, to the screen and the handsome explorer there you can see that his hands look as handsome as his face. Then we've got some 3D text, which I felt came out okay, but this is where I had real difficulty with the prompting. The prompting just did not do what I wanted it to do. 
Tutankhamun once again. This is the Emperor Haile Selassie. <laughs> He's got the dreadlocks. I'm not sure that's accurate. And we've got some 3D text. 3D text with gilding. So you can see it's very versatile. I want to do a very quick comparison. Some of those images I also try to do inside of Stable Diffusion 3, the Assistant. Inside of Stable Diffusion 3 Assistant, this is a portal with the woman looking through. It's supposed to be she's in a destroyed. This is one that I've used since Stable Diffusion 1.5. So it's a very challenging prompt where we want the interior of the portal to be a beautiful city in the future, very futuristic. And we also want the outside of the portal to, to show signs of devastation and destruction. Here, Stable Diffusion 3 kind of like didn't get the prompt properly. It, it's got devastation everywhere. There was another one which I did where it got the prompt. It knew that uh, you wanted a beautiful image inside of this mirror portal and it's provided a lot of devastation on the outside, which is exactly what the prompt asks for. Here, this is the text where it says Flux version 1.1 Pro and there's no text. And once again, no text. It's just giving us some blue spheres. Those were definitely in the prompt, but there was also text in the prompt and it just didn't give us any text whatsoever. We then move to another one. You can see the 1.1 there, but nothing in terms of the, the text that I've asked for. And we see once again, what I did here was I just put in the text, just give me the text, just <laughs> 3D render of text saying Flux 1.1 and Pro, and I did it in a style. You can ask it to do a particular style. So you click and you choose a particular style. So in the style here, and it should produce the text in a particular style. It just produced more of these beautiful, really nice looking, fantastic looking decorative bowls, but not what I was asking for. I removed everything apart from just give me text and it just gave me this interesting design this interesting one. Uh, Cleopatra wearing the visors, that one came out okay, but it was supposed to be photorealistic, came out as an illustration. So with, no, with Stable Diffusion inside of Stable Assistant, because it can do a bunch of things, it's able to produce images, audio, 3D, 3D objects and video. You've got to specify, I want an image of this, I want a video of that. Otherwise, it produces the wrong output. So when I was doing these, I was a very specific. Give me a low angle image, the real portrait. And if it didn't give me that, I was very specific, a photorealistic portrait. And it kind of did, but it didn't. It just gave me an illustration and it gave me an illustration again. It wasn't as good at prompt following as the Flux models. This is Tutankhamun with the drones flying around him and the visor it just looks like a statue. And once again, I tried to get it to do some 3D text. As you can see, it just gave us some, some weird 3D stuff. And then finally, final attempt, just give me the words text and render. And it kind of gave out something interesting, but nowhere near as good as the stuff that we got inside of the Flux models. And we can take a look at this image here. This is one of those prompts that only Dali 3 has actually managed to do really well. Now the Flux Pro version, managed to do it really well. You've got the prompt where you've got the devastated alleyway that she's supposed to be in. Neon lights inside of the alleyway and then inside of the mirror portal universe, you've got this beautiful looking architecture. Some reflections in the lake there. It looks beautiful inside. It looks devastated outside. It's managed to just maintain everything as it exactly the prompt wants it to be. Now we did get this other one where it got a little bit confused and it gave us two images. One which just seems to be uh, a re replica of what we see inside of the Mirror Portal universe. But still, aesthetically, it's a lot better than the, uh, the, the Stable Diffusion. I'm not sure which exactly which version of Stable Diffusion it uses inside of the Stable Assistant. But the quality is a lot better. Now I have had quite a lot of success with Stable Assistant and the quality of images that it produces. And I've been using it for quite a while. It's certainly better than Dali 3 most of the time. And we also have this issue with the Flux models where you can't really do negative prompts. So if you're getting a lot of 
if you're getting a lot of signatures inside your images, you can't negatively prompt against that. That is a bit of a drawback with the, not just with the Pro models, but with all of the Flux models really, isn't it? So there are some challenges when it comes to prompting the Flux models. The Pro version is much, much more capable than the dev model. And it's uh, quite a little bit more stable and less likely to artifact than the Schnell model. So definitely something to try out. And I'll be looking in future at a few services which offer these new models and uh, just basically comparing, seeing what they've got to offer.